Russia never acquired uh, the membership properly, so we cannot exclude someone who was never included. Russia uses the veto in order to avoid accountability, in particular accountability for Russia's own egregious violations of international law. Russia is illegally occupying a place in the UN as much as it illegally occupies the territory of Ukraine, of Georgia, and of other countries that it has invaded throughout its history. Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Media Center, an NGO Euro-Atlantic course, and I'm your host, Miroslava Yaremkiv. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the fact that Russian Federation, despite continuous violation of international law, is still a permanent member of the UN Security Council, and moreover, has a right to veto and block any decision made by the Council. In reality, Russia uses the same low-class hood tactics in the diplomatic field, the same as in their foreign policy and on the battlefield. When in 1991 Russia took over the council seat that the USSR held as the founding state of the UN, it had no legal basis to do this, because a. there was no country with an official name Russian Federation. It was only in 1992, after all constitutional changes, that the name was adopted. And b. Russia didn't legally indicate that it was a successor of the USSR. Again, only in 2020 Putin amended the constitution, which stated for the first time that the Russian Federation is the legal successor of the USSR. If you want to learn more about this subject, please continue watching this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our videos in the future. After the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, Ukrainian diplomats such as Ukrainian ambassador to the UN Serhii Kaslitsa and Minister of Foreign Affairs Dmitry Kuleba have called for the suspension or expulsion of Russia from the United Nations and its organs and removing its veto power. More on that, let's start with Dr. Yuri Lutsenko, co-founder of the NGO Civic Hub International, that works in a joint effort with Ukrainian and international diplomats to make that happen. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the Russian Federation in the uh, United Nations, because the question that is being asked, uh, especially after a number of pronouncements, the question that is being asked uh, that... Uh, the need to exclude the Russian Federation from the UN Security Council. And our team, our team of the initiative group of the Civic Hub team, we're insisting on uh, the fact that this is really not the right wording because obviously, absolutely obviously, uh, the workings of the UN Security Council, uh, Council are blocked because of Russia's position. And it has been like this for years and years and years. In fact, Russia has used uh, veto powers may, more times than any other members of the uh, UN, uh, permanent members of the UN Security Council combined. So while the question of Russia blocking the workings of the UN Security Council is correct, the question of uh, excluding the Russian Federation from U UN Security Council uh, has to be posed somewhat differently for the following reason. The thing is, Russia is in uh, the UN illegally. That's the whole point. Because in 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed and uh, ceased to exist as uh, a geopolitical re reality and legal entity, Russia was a new country. It had to apply vis-a-vis uh, -vis UN, Russia was a new country and it had to apply from scratch, just like you know, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Moldova, so on and so forth, all other countries of the former Soviet Union. So rather than talking about excluding Russia from the Security Council, we have to talk about the fact that Russia is present and uh, we are insisting on uh, our team of the initiative, Civic Hub Initiative Group is insisting that it's not about excluding, it's stopping Russia's illegitimate presence at the UN in general. Because you see, the fact that Russia is in the Security Council. This is a consequence of the fact that Russia is in the UN. Okay, 
because Security Council is a working body of the United Nations, right? Right. And then we're going back to the following question. How was it possible that Russia has become, uh, ended up in the United Nations without going through all of the proper procedures? And, um, you know, you can read all of this materials. We call, our team calls it a the biggest uh, geopolitical swindle of the 20th century. Uh, when vis-a-vis uh, -vis UN Charter, the only two uh, foundations, so to say, for Russia to become uh, present, again, I'm insisting on this, become present at the UN because Russia never acquired uh, the membership properly. So we cannot exclude someone who was never included, right? So uh, the entire foundation for Russia's presence at the United Nations are two pieces of paper. One is so-called Almaty papers. Again, we call them papers because they bear no significance whatsoever for the UN. And number two is Yeltsin's letter where they're saying, oh, we used to be Soviet Union, now we are Russia. Change of the nameplates. Uh, bottom line is we have to raise the issue of La Russia's illegitimate presence at the UN. Then there are a number of mechanisms that I'll talk about it a little later. And uh, we have to understand that Russia's presence at the Security Council is a consequence of Russia's illegal, legitimate presence at the United Nations in general. What can be done and what can be done and uh, the number of options here? Well, there are a number of options. And when can it be done? Huh. Uh, it can take anywhere from a month to about a year, I would say. If we go through the route of uh, the um, so-called credential committee, because uh, we have developed a very, very strong legal base. And when I say we, is our international team of the initiative group of Civic Hub, which includes our team includes the best scholars of international law on this earth, right? So we have developed a very strong legal, legal argument that Russia's presence at the UN is totally illegitimate. Now, uh, if that is taken into consideration, then we will uh, go through so-called South African route through the Credential Committee. Uh, what, what it means is that the Credential Committee of the United Nations, before each um, session, they verify the credentials. And it's, even th through the credential committee, the South African delegation was not allowed to be present at the UN uh, from 1969 to 1984. There are more than enough moral and judicial reasons for Russia to lose its seat at the UN Security Council. But can it be actually done legally? Like, what is the procedure of excluding a country from the Council, and has it ever been done before? Dr. Thomas D. Grant, international lawyer and professor of Cambridge University, has some answers to all of those questions. The UN Charter provides for expelling a member country, where the country has persistently violated principles of the UN Charter. There's no real doubt that Russia is responsible for violations of international law that justify removing Russia from the UN, not just from the UN Security Council, but from the UN as a whole. Now, though the UN has never expelled a member, it has taken steps to limit or to suspend the participation of a member. In 1956, the UN prevented Hungary from participating. This was after the USSR had invaded Hungary and imposed a puppet regime on that country. For the years 1956, 57, and 58, the UN kept Hungary's representatives out of the organization. Then in 1974, the UN prevented South Africa from participating. This was in response to South Africa refusing to end its apartheid racist system of government. How did the UN do this? How did it prevent a country from participating? even though it didn't expel the country outright. Now, in both cases, Hungary in 1956, South Africa in 1974, the UN General Assembly used its procedural rules. It's under the credentials procedure 
that the UN Security Council could vote to reject Russia's credentials. Um, but wouldn't Russia veto any proposal to prevent Russia from participating in the council? After all, Russia holds a permanent member seat in the council and every permanent member has the power of veto. Veto, however, applies only to matters of legal substance in the council. A veto does not apply to decisions of procedure. Credentials decisions are decisions of procedure. Accordingly, Russia could not use the veto to block the council from rejecting Russia's credentials. Now, in the Security Council, Russia fills the seat allocated under the UN Charter to the Soviet Union, the USSR. Ukraine's foreign minister recently has observed that Russia came to fill the USSR seat in December 1991. The foreign minister has raised the question whether Russia coming to fill the USSR seat was constitutionally proper. It's a serious question. Mr. Kuleba, the foreign minister of Ukraine, is in good company when he asks it. One of the preeminent international lawyers of the latter part of the 20th century, Professor Yehuda Bloom, who held the Hirsch Lauterpacht Chair of International Law at the University of Jerusalem, and in fact had represented his country at the UN for a number of years, doubted whether it was constitutionally proper for Russia to fill the old Soviet seat. The Ukraine has good reason to remind UN members of the manner in which Russia came to fill the Soviet seat, which was at best idiosyncratic. And Ukraine also has good reason to remind UN members of the manner in which Russia uses that seat. Since 1991, Russia has been by far the most prolific among permanent members in wielding the veto. Russia has wielded the veto repeatedly to block the Council from responding to Russia's aggression against Ukraine, among other abuses of the veto. And let's make no mistake, Russia does not use the Security Council veto in order to champion the underdeveloped world or the global south or to stand up against some supposed coalition of bad actors. Russia uses the veto in order to avoid accountability, in particular accountability for Russia's own egregious violations of international law. For the Security Council to use its credentials procedure to exclude Russia would follow practically to the letter well-tested UN precedent. It would open the door for the Council to act on substantive matters such as Russia's war crimes and Russia's legal responsibility to pay financial compensation to Ukraine for the injuries that Russia's aggression has caused. Moreover, it would demonstrate the Council's resolve against the most serious challenge to the UN Charter since the inception of the organization. Finally, let's hear Dmitro Natalyukha, member of the Parliament of Ukraine, and he will share information about petition that, with the support of President Volodymyr Zelensky, demands the UN to provide documents which prove Russia rightfully occupies a seat in the UN Security Council and the UN in general. During his speech, you will find a QR code that leads you to the website where you can sign this petition, so together we can stop the fictitious membership of the Russian Federation in the UN. I'm going to tell you about one of the biggest swindles in the history of international politics and international diplomacy, which is Russia illegally occupies a place in the United Nations and in the United Nations Security Council. In 1991, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia appeared and emerged as a new member of the United Nations and of the United Nations Security Council without anyone voting for it as, a, as for a new country and without any procedures of succession because the United Nations Charter holds no provisions of succession by one country to another. So how did that happen that in 1991, Russia appeared there out of the blue and became both the member of United Nations and the permanent member of the United Nations Security Council? The answer is by simply replacing the name tags or the nameplates from Soviet Union to Russian Federation. Now, this allows Russia until today to abuse its veto power and to block 
any initiatives in the United Nations that might help to end this war of aggression that Russia has launched on Ukraine. Simply saying, Russia is illegally occupying a place in the UN as much as it illegally occupies the territory of Ukraine, of Georgia, and of other countries that it has invaded throughout its history. Now, we have taken this matter in our hands and have launched a petition that has gathered more than 250,000 uh, signatures to kick Russia out of the UN. We have adopted a resolution in the Ukrainian parliament that recognizes that Russia is illegally present in the United Nations. We have addressed the national governments, the national parliaments of our friends and allies to add and ask them to do the same, to address their own uh, foreign ministries, their own secretaries of foreign affairs, their own national delegations to the uh, United Nations to kick Russia out of the UN because it has no legal grounds to be there as a member. And this is the same that you can do. You can sign and share the petition to kick Russia out of the UN and you can address your national parliaments, your national governments, your diplomatic sector and ask them to kick Russia out of the United Nations because Russia has never belonged there. Russia is illegally occupying a place in the UN and we should put an end to this as much as we should put an end to the brutal aggression Russia Federation has launched on Ukraine in 2022. You've been watching the special project by Ukraine Media Center and Euro-Atlantic course dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war, Ukraine in Flames. In the description under this video, you can find information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video. Slava Ukraini!